Hi there, this is Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of the barrel distortion that you get from a GoPro camera. So here we go, we're doing a follow cam here. And what I'm doing is actually I have a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition attached to a DJI Phantom Quadcopter. And so I'm flying along the side of the car here and filming it. But notice the distortion is pretty severe to the point where I'll, let me just look at it, looks like it's sliding sideways there and then I'll pause here. We have a very short car indeed. So you can see uh, the distortion is very severe and you can see it curving up here and around there. So that's one of the problems with this camera when you shoot it in the ultra wide mode. But fortunately we've got several ways, well two ways we're gonna look at of getting rid of this distortion inside of Photoshop. As you can see, I've loaded in the video there. I just imported this video into Photoshop CC. And then what I'm going to do to apply this filter is I need to actually convert this from a video into a smart object. If I keep it as the video as it is right now and I apply filters, it's only going to filter one frame and the rest of it's going to stay unfiltered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose convert to smart object. Now when I convert it to a smart object, you'll see the icon changes here. You'll also notice that the timeline changes to purple instead of blue. This indicates that we are now working rather than directly on footage. If we scroll it down, you will actually see here that we're working on what would be known as a graphic. So it actually thinks we're working on a graphic. So when we right click, we'll see some of the options have changed. And this is the smart object. So that means now when we apply any of our adjustments or our filters, should I say, those filters are going to apply to the entire smart object, which are going to now affect every single frame of the video. If you want to get back to the video, just right click here and this will open it inside a new window and then you can manipulate the video independently. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at method number one. Method number one is to go under the filter here, and this is a very quick way of doing it, and we can go to Lens Correction. Now, under Lens Correction, if you have the latest version of the uh, Camera Raw plugin installed, and, uh, you know, and, and it's available at Adobe Labs if you don't already have an update with it, of course, you have to be using Photoshop CC for this to work. As we go under correction, notice the geometric distortion is turned on. So we click, click under camera make here and we're going to choose GoPro. And notice you'll see that the distortion is removed there. And it's only going to preview the particular frame that we are on right now. And we can see that it's selected here. We've got the black edition. So let me just choose. I have the GoPro Pro Hero 3 black edition with the black edition lenses. So you can see there, that's our uh, distortion. And if we click OK, it now applies it to the entire video. So we can have a look and see how this looks. Uh, it's probably going to take a little while. In fact, I can scrub through this video because now that we've applied this filter, it's going to take a little while for this to go through. So you can see it's looking a little weird still. Of course, when it goes here, look at that. Now it's looking great there in the middle but what happens sometimes when you're using this filter is when you get around the edges it can still get a little bit strange as you see there notice that the horizon is definitely straightened up a lot and it looks a lot better but it's not really giving me the effect i'm looking for so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the smart object and i'm going to turn off the lens correction so you can see what a massive difference that's made now just bear in mind certain types of footage this looks great and this is all you need to do. But sometimes you have footage such as this because the car is moving backwards and forwards in the focal plane that we can sometimes get a different result and it doesn't look so good. So one of the things I like to do on video is to go up here and we're going to choose the filter, make sure our layer is still selected. And this time we're going to choose filter and we're going to choose the adaptive wide angle. And then by clicking on the adaptive wide angle, this applies a different type of distortion correction and you'll see here we have fisheye is turned on. So there's other options available but we're going to be using fisheye for the video because we want to correct a fisheye lens. 
So notice that we've got a little bit of white space around the edge there. So that's because it's distorting that area to uh, take advantage of that correction, but it's also creating some transparency. So we can choose to scale it inside of Photoshop, or we can choose right now just to click it and drag the scale up just ever so slightly. There we go, until we fill in that area. And notice now that we don't have any transparency around the edges. And at this point, we could play around with the focal and crop if you want to get a custom distortion correction. Notice it's a little bit curved, but I don't mind a little bit of a curve because if I want to look at this, what we had before compared to what we have now, it's looking a lot better. So maybe we could play around with the focal length just a little bit. If we go this way, you'll see we get more distortion. If we go the other way, you'll notice that we get less distortion. So you just got to really just play around with that. Uh, but it, I like the default, so I'm just going to hit the reset button. And the way I do that is by hitting the option key, clicking on the cancel will become reset. And let's just scale it back up a little bit because I want to see what this overall video looks like. Just take it a little bit bigger and click OK. So now we've applied this. We could scrub through this video now and have a look and see how it looks. So what I'm going to do right now is to save you having to wait while I render this because I can hit the space bar here. And as I hit the space bar, it's going to start to play it frame by frame. You'll see that it appears green here, which means that if I hit the space bar to stop it, I can go back there and I can play it and it will play back in real time and then continue to load this into RAM. So just to save you the, uh, the problems of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go to another clip where I already have them here. Okay, I've got the video clips up here and I just want to show you here. And this is the one with no correction. Here's the original footage. And you can see it looks like the car is sliding sideways at that point. And then the miniature car disappears. Then let's have a look at it using the lens correction. So this is using the lens profile. You can see once it gets away from the camera over there, it looks really nice. But when it gets close to the camera, we can get some odd things going on. And now my favorite here is the adaptive wide angle. And if we look at this, here we go. Notice that the correction is much better, much more natural. And away we go. So now that was a very severe example. Um, and if it works well on this example, then you know it's going to work well on other ones um, because this object is very close to the camera. Typically, when you're flying with this helicopter, things are a lot further away than that and, uh, and you get less distortion. But there we go. That's how to correct it using Photoshop. And at this point, when you're done, you could apply your other filters. But what I would recommend, rather than going in and doing editing and filtering right now because we've got some pretty heavy adjustments going here what I would choose to do is I would choose file export and then we're going to choose render video then from render video what you want to do is go up here under the format this is what you're going to see by default it's going to show Adobe Media Encoder by default change it to QuickTime and then we're going to use animation high quality which is a lossless format and then at that point, we're going to select our folder, name it, and then hit render, and then render out a video that we can bring back in later on for editing. And that way, um, we don't have to worry about waiting uh, while it renders this effect on every single frame every time. So sometimes you just want to take these big moves like this and bake them in. However, before you go in and bake these kind of settings in, if there's any overall image adjustments that you want to make, such as, for example, image adjustments, and we want to do maybe a shadow highlight, and open up these shadows a little bit, like that, and maybe recover our highlights, just to kind of clean up these trees. If you look at this before and after, I'll show you. See that? So when you're going to apply an adjustment like this, and we click OK, this is also applying as a smart filter. So any of these filters that you want to apply overall on the entire image, I would suggest while you've got it in a smart object, 
apply all these filters, render the video, then bring it back and then do your editing and adjustment layers and, and other things that you're gonna do for uh, your kind of effects and, and your movie making.